Hi there, I'm Sandy Almock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today we're going to make a rose garden. The idea for this quick little video came from the Gina K stamp set I'm using, and I grabbed a bunch of my floral markers, floral colored markers that I wanted to use for this card and stamped the, the image twice. It's a cluster of roses, so I put them both together and masked one so I could stamp the other behind it and make a whole little rose garden down at the bottom, intending to put a big background in there. I've had a lot of people ask in recent weeks and months, will I show you how to make that kind of mottled background? So this video is a little more about that, but I'm gonna show you this rose first in a little closer to real time, and then we'll speed through the rest just cause. So when you're doing a multicolored rose or any kind of multicolored flower, I like to put the base color down, the main color of the image, and then whatever the edges are. And this particular rose that I saw had like peachy pinky colored edges. And then it started building toward deep reds in the middle. And when you're doing any kind of flower like this, it, just look at the markers you have. I'm not putting them on the screen. You can, of course, pick up that JPEG that I showed you a minute ago over on my blog if you want to follow along with those colors. But really, use your markers and choose colors that you think match a picture that you find on Google or something. I always pull out my phone and try to get inspired by coloring some roses that I've never colored that way before. And I might color this one in a couple of different ways to just practice coloring roses. Most flowers, the main thing is going to be to give them that dimension is putting the shadows on the interior of each one of those petals where they reach down toward the center of the flower, toward the stem. But depending on the rose, it may end up with darker color around the outside edges because that's the color, not because that's a shadow, but because that's a color. And that's what I'm doing here because that first pink I put down wasn't pink enough. It didn't match the picture. And a lot of times I just keep adding layer after layer of color until it kind of works for what I'm looking for. I knew that this card was going to end up being about that background rather than about the rose. So even though I was trying to do one really nice rose, uh, I'm not overly worried about it because it's the overall effect of the card that I am looking to create. But I'm just kind of slowly trying to blend some of the colors, some of the edges, so I don't end up with too much hard edges in any of these spots. But you can always go back in later. It's always wise to go back over your coloring or look at it at least when you get the whole thing done because by the time it dries, you might find that things dry differently. Some edges might dry harder than you expected because when you put this ink into the paper, you're wetting the paper. And you know anything that's wet is going to get darker. It's going to get a little discolored. So I'm relatively happy with where this is. I just want to throw a little bit more red in the center and then go on to the rest of the card. These leaves, I really actually didn't need to go in and do this much detail on them. After getting done, I realized I spent a lot of time on that that didn't necessarily need to be spent. But I threw some color in there, a couple different greens, and then started throwing color into the other flowers. And the thing I want you to notice is that I'm just kind of throwing color in there. I'm not being really careful about it. If you want to Google a particular type of flower, like a particular breed of it, breed, is that what they're called? I don't even know, a particular kind of rose. If you Google that name, you'll get side views and top views and all that sort of thing. So you can get into all the detail on these roses. But I knew the background was going to be the big thing that would make this card sing. So I'm trying to keep the same colors that I already had in the first rose. I want to have that flavor of having yellow roses with some pink and red in them. And for now, I'm just throwing color in here because I want to get to that background and make sure that I'm not spending all my time on these perfect roses and then I screw up the background. So <laughs> it's always fun to put the better details and the tidying up of the roses in later. And I started grabbing blues and greens and blue greens and just randomly placing them down in blobs. See? I've said before on Instagram, it's blobs of color. That's how we do it. And the secret to this is a lot of color, just lots and lots of layers of color and keep going over it and over it. And I wanted to build up to have that one layer of that yellow green right around the sentiment. So it was nice and readable. And then just kept kind of going over the rest of it here and there. 
the whole time just until that starts to soften so you can see it begin to soften and here's where I realized I really didn't need to spend any of that time on those leaves because I was just going around them with that blue green anyway and then I took my mini mister that I keep on hand it's got some colorless blender in it don't do this with ranger solution or alcohol you buy at the store or anything you want this to be colorless blender I did a couple spritzes so that will help to I guess kind of hide a little bit of any of the places that didn't blend well by making a, a sort of mini dot pattern and then I took the inside of the mister and I'm just making large dots you could do this with a colorless blender marker but doing it this way you can get out a little bit more color and you know drop an actual drop of it rather than pushing the marker into it and sometimes it it'll make a different effect and that sort of thing and once all of this is done then you can go in and tidy up the roses a little bit more and one of the other things that I started doing before I went into the roses was brightening up the leaves see this is why I didn't really have to do anything with the leaves I could have just put the green in afterward this YG03 is a really good color to push into other colors to make it more green and here's more of what it looked like uh, a little darker in color than it appeared in the video and you can see I've kind of mushed up my flowers a little bit but that background is the thing that makes it sing that background and the front flower are the ones that have a real impact so that's where I wanted to put my focus and my time and so there you go there's the background that everybody's been wanting to see I will have more of those over time as I do them here on YouTube because I enjoy doing them they're a lot of fun I will see you guys again in another video thanks for stopping by and hitting that like button bye bye